Phil does not need any introduction from me. Uh, anything to say would be dwarfed by his own presence, but there he is. Let me uh, let me turn on him on the video here, and uh, there you go. So there he is, waiting for us. And we're going to start. Awesome. We're going to start with uh, Parma. So let me switch to your camera, Parma, and you can ask uh, the first question. Go ahead. Um, thank you for the presentation. And my question is, what personality trait do you think is most beneficial to success? Can you catch that, Bill? Yeah. No, that's a great question. Um, I'd say probably persistence is the thing that makes the biggest difference. I mean, it's great to be interested in reading. Uh, it's great to be curious. And but everybody has has some of those things. If you can pick something and you know really push yourself to understand it very very well uh, and persist. I remember in in a lot of things I do, I get to a point where I think I'm fairly good, and then I find out that you know maybe I could be a lot better. Uh, several times people would look at my code, tell me it wasn't very good. Uh, and yet, you know, to take that feedback and have it engage you to just push harder, try harder, I, I think, you know, confidence, persistence are pretty, I'd put it at the, the top of the list. All right. Thank you, Bill. Okay. The next question is coming from Osagi. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Osagi Middle School. And let me bring you guys up. Osagi Middle School. Go ahead. What an emerging technology today do you think will cause a major change in how we live in the world? Okay. You catch that, Bill? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the biggest thing is that, you know, we thought of computers as these things that sit on a desk and you have a mouse and keyboard uh, or, you know, it's a phone in your pocket. As the computer is able to see, that is, its vision through very deep cameras, and its ability to listen, to understand uh, speech, for example, gets better, then computing becomes kind of pervasive. And you even put those vision and listening capabilities on robot-type devices. And as the software gets smarter and smarter uh, to use that vision and anticipate, you know, to see what's going on, then it's it's kind of amazing what computers can do. And, uh, you know, they, there's really no limit uh, to their ability to both help us and, and do things on their own, and some people even worry that they'll get they'll get too capable. But we, the progress right now on things like speech and vision and and learning type technology that companies like Microsoft and Google and others are driving is quite amazing. And so computers won't be just this desktop thing uh, in the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next question is coming from Galactic. Uh, Galactic, uh, it's a fifth grade class. Go ahead. Who was your role model and why? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say I just had any one role model. I mean, certainly, uh, you know, my parents, you know, were hardworking and, and set an example for me. Uh, eventually, I got to meet uh, some scientists who would just dig into their topic and spend their life learning it and realizing what they didn't know. and always pushing themselves to understand more. People like Richard Feynman was a physicist. Uh, I got to meet Warren Buffett, who always thought about stocks and businesses and how, he, how they got profitability and just lived his life to really understand that very, very well. And I read a lot of biographies and autobiographies. So, you know, uh, Lincoln uh, is an inspiring story. Uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt is an inspiring story. Uh, and a lot of people have dealt with very tough situations and, and done well. So I think in reading lots of biographies and taking nuggets of how people uh, manage to make a, a huge difference. And then, you know, as much as possible, spend more time with people you admire and try to understand what is it about them uh, that makes them, you know, so great. And, you know, it won't just be their intelligence. It'll be their, uh, their, their personality. Thank you, Bill. Okay, we have Santa Fe, Santa Fe Trail, Santa Fe Trail uh, Middle School. Um, what, why did you start the um, Gates Foundation? Well, I was very lucky that the Microsoft success created a lot of wealth. Uh, and so the question is, you know, what 
what should I do so that's most beneficial? And, you know, at first, of course, you can buy, you know, uh, some, some more books or go on more scripts and things, but the scale is way beyond any reasonable personal consumption. And so if you decide that having your kids have that huge wealth would not be beneficial to them, then you think, okay, where could it go? And that's where I started studying about poor countries and uh, why so many kids in poor countries are still dying of uh, diseases that we uh, pretty much eliminated, diarrhea and pneumonia, malaria. And I decided, hey, I love science. I love innovation. Let's make sure that innovation is working as much as possible to help the poorest in the world. And so that's about 70% of what we do in the foundation, and you know, I've gotten to learn new things, a lot of fun, and 30% is helping with US education, trying to figure out how we can help teachers uh, do an even better job of, of educating kids in, in this country. Good, thank you. Okay, next we have the Jewish Community High School. How do you think online learning will affect education in the next five to 10 years? I'm very excited about online learning. Uh, the idea that you can have the world's best lecture just there uh, at your fingertips is a, quite a phenomenal thing because the best lectures in terms of making the subject interesting and understandable are so much better than the average lecture. And then, of course, you can create communities. You can interact. You can do, try problem sets, work together, get advice from people. You know, I think every student should know their math skills, how good they are. Right now. You know, you, you kind of take a test and get the single score, but understanding what areas are kind of weak in, what materials are out there to help you improve, uh, you know, you personally should have that online learning profile and, and be advised how you can how you can get better. And so I don't think it'll replace teachers in the classroom in uh, the high school area, but once you get up to college, self-directed learning will be a, a much, much a uh, bigger thing. And so our foundation is the biggest funder of all these online courses and seeing what kind of students they work for and blending. So it's not just online versus traditional classroom, but where you're using online and the traditional classroom trying to get the best of both worlds there. So it's pretty exciting already. Things like Calm that I hope a lot of you have played around with for math type things. Uh, a few dozen sites like that really are starting to make a difference. Well, I just want to add, I have to add right now quickly that the whole hour of code is an online learning that wouldn't even be possible without the internet. So getting, you know, hopefully 10 million kids this uh, week learning the code for the first time is going to be a fantastic application of online learning. So that's my, my own little plug there. Let's go to uh, the Jewish community. Next we have uh, the Central Jersey College Prep. Yep. Um, oh, no, hello, no. Mr. Gates. It is just an honor to be speaking to you today. Uh, my question is that can you give us an example of a time when a kid has given you useful advice that has made a difference in your life? Well, certainly uh, it keeps me, you know, fresh and uh, thinking about things in a, in a good way to have children. I have children 17, uh, 14, and 11, and, you know, they – like some Microsoft products, they you know give me feedback of how we could improve some of those products, and just the whole way that they see the internet and you know take it for granted, which of course at their age, when I was their age, there was no internet, and you know I also get to go out to schools and talk to students about things like online learning. Why you know did they think it's relevant to them, or if it's just you know not yet in a form that makes a difference for them? So going out. Talking to students uh, is fantastic. I always meet with the summer interns that, that work. I did it at Microsoft every year. I do it now at the foundation. Uh, they come in with a fresh view of, you know, how, what do they think is new and exciting? How do they think the organization could be better? And so the fresh, innovative eyes of young people are really where a lot of the, the improvement can take place. And you never want to uh, lose touch with that. So. Uh, you know, kids think in an in a un, unconstrained, open way. Well, thank, thank you. you very much, sir, and hopefully this is not the only time. Okay. All right, we have Freedom Elementary. Hey. Who's going to ask your question? Your traffic count program was your first program ever you ever sold. 
In the era before computers were mentioned, how did you know your product would be successful? Yeah, so the the very first thing I got paid for was kind of an obscure thing, which is that they measure how much traffic we're on certain roads to understand when to do maintenance and how to clean the traffic lights, whether to put in a traffic light. Um, they, they would put a rubber hose across the road, and it would see the cars going by, and then there'd be a counter in a metal box, and it would punch out a paper tape with the every 15 minutes, the traffic counts of, of how many axles, how many cars went over that uh, the hose. And then they would need somebody to take that and print it out and figure out what the trends and the peaks and various things like that were. And they were using these really expensive computers and we charged several hundred dollars for it. And so my friends and I took the first computer on a chip and wire wrapped it together. There were no personal computers and created a machine that was designed to print out these charts. And so it's a very, very limited machine, like a million times as powerful as the, the phone that all of you probably uh, uh, either have or will, will have. But it was enough to do that. And so we got paid, we charged them like $30 where they paid like $100. So even though we were kids and they weren't quite sure about us, it, we sent the stuff back, it looked accurate, our price was a lot lower. And, uh, never got to be a huge business, but we made uh, about three or four thousand a year for about three years there, and that was the money that I took that let me uh, start Microsoft uh, without having any income while we were doing the, the very first program development. Great, thank you. Okay, and I believe I don't have a question for Academy Aerospace, so I'm going to go on to Burbank and uh, Burbank High School. Let me bring it up here. Hold on. Okay, Burbank High School, go ahead. Uh, my question is, if you can travel back in time and talk to your own yourself and give yourself an advice, what would it be and why? Well, there's a lot of fascinating periods in history. Um, you know, there's people like Deng Xiaoping who reformed what was going on in China. It was very difficult. Uh, there's, you know, some amazing U.S. leaders that understand understanding uh, like how Lincoln thought about things, and the very difficult things he had to go go through, and how he was able to you know build teams of people and keep a focus on the the good principles. Um, you know, if you could go back enough in time, understanding the uh, you know what happened 65 million years ago when the dinosaurs died out, you know, seeing all that cataclysm and uh, how the Earth was different, that would be pretty cool in terms of understanding natural history. Uh, so it, it'd be nice to have a time machine. Uh, I'm amazed how much we can learn about the past without actually being able to go back there just by looking at the the, the way scientists now uh, gather information. It's it's amazing, but it's not as good as, as if, if we could actually go back. Great. And then, Bill, since we have five minutes left, do you have any just comments for the kids who are about, many of them are going to be learning programming for the very first time this week in their first hour of code? I think the, um, I, I go back to the point about persistence, which is that, you know, the idea of a program and, and variables and, you know, if statements and data structures, at first, it's kind of confusing. But then after you see a few of them, you know, then you kind of get the sense of how it works. And, and it's fun. When you write a program, you know, at first it doesn't work and then you get it to work. Uh, there's a real sense of satisfaction that comes out of that. And, you know, it, it really is you just have to, you know, persist in trying different things out and make a lot of mistakes in it, uh, but it, it can be very gratifying. And even if you don't end up going into something related to programming, understanding programming will give you a sense of how computers work, what they can do, what they can't do. And if people have a mysterious sense of, well, maybe they can do everything, but of course, that's, that's not true. They're just certainly in today's incarnation a very very limited tool. So, you know, I think programming can be fun. It'll help to do logical thinking. Uh, you know, it's for everyone, you know, not just uh, boys or not just math geeks. You know, everybody uh, can enjoy it. And, and uh, there's some, you know, great programs that you'll have a chance to do. And for people who, who choose to make a career out of it, it, it's a phenomenal thing uh, that you get to build these 
these products and, and work on very tough problems. Uh, so, you know, you, you are the future workers of the country, and the more you know about software encoding, the, the better off we'll be. Great. And, and just, just, you mentioned persistence. I just wanted to recognize before we close today, one of the groups here were snowed out at a snow day, and they actually yeah. got to the teacher's house in order to chat with you. So I just wanted to recognize this class that is at home, uh, at a teacher's home, uh, to make sure they could uh, make their chat with you today. So thank you very much, Bill. Uh, so we all have a round of applause. Go ahead, unmute microphones, everyone. Let's all have a round of applause for, for Bill Gates and to thank him for doing this.